Today is Sunday, August 14th, 2022. It is also day 392 of data science and I haven't worked on a real data set in months and so I decided to work on this menu nutrition data set um, from Kaggle by Deep Contractor, um, I believe, and I already downloaded it so I'm just going to go here to the file and I'm going to go to files, the little icon there, and just upload that. I'm going to right click and copy the path and then I'm going to go here to my code and I'm going to import pandas as pd. Um, pandas is a library that contains functions that makes it um, very easy to read in files. So I'll just set a variable called data and set it equal to pd dot read csv because this is a csv file and then just in quotations paste that path in there that I just copied and as you know or as you can see it's a csv file and then I'm going to run that and I'm going to take the data and then do the dot head method and the dot head is going to return the first five rows of my data set and then I'll be able to see that there which is the same thing that I see over here just in a different format all right so the what I'm going to do today I guess I'm going to attempt to basically get the mean and standard deviation of one of the values so it might be like the saturated fat or the total fat or the protein and then I'm going to plot the normal distribution. I'm going to try to make up like a question that I have. I don't know. I'm just going to go with it. And then I'm going to plot the normal distribution graphs. That's what I'm going to attempt to do. We'll see if that actually happens. So I guess I'm going to do, let's see. I could always do, um, let me look at this. I'll do total carbohydrates. So that's like at the end, is it not? Total, right here, total carbohydrates. So I'm going to go ahead and work with this column over here. So in order to do that, I'm just going to click on a new code and I'm going to import matplotlib. Actually, for now, I'll import Seaborn as SNS and I'll run that. And then I'll do SNS dot and then his plot because I believe it has a his plot and then put in my data and the column name, which is total um, carbohydrates and then run that and hopefully it works. Right. So it gives me a histogram of that data, which is literally what I see over here. Same thing. Um, OK, so not to make it pretty. Um, let's see. I'll go ahead and just do. First of all, maybe I should do, maybe I should import my plotlib, or maybe not. Maybe I should just leave it like that. No, I'll do it like that. So I'll import my plotlib dot pyplot as plt. This is a plotting library, and I'll just do, um, I'll create a figure. So I'll do um, plt dot subplots, and then I'll do like I want one row and two columns, and then I want the fig size. Um, to be equal to let's say 10 and then 5 so we can see that happening um, and then what I can do is just make sure that I bring this over here down below and then I can just set this equal to the fig and then axes and because there's two, I should probably do, actually, I could just do fig and then axis, set that equal to that. And then set the, there's a parameter in the Seaborn that's AX, and it just allows you to assign that AX to a certain thing, comma, whoops. Blah, 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 X axis, okay, so X, and then... AX1. There we go. Okay, so basically the error was that I forgot to put in the second one. So because I said two columns, that's going to be two graphs. And so I have to respectively give them each a variable here. And if they're in the same row, I have to put them in parentheses. Um, so this would be AX and then AX1. Or I could just, you know, to make it more in context, this is graph one and this is graph two. And so basically I'm saying over here, that I want this to be graph one um, with the AX parameter. Same thing. Um, I should probably make this a little wider, so maybe like 15, something like that. All right, and then I can do, let's see, I could do SNS, no, not SNS, PLT, or I could just do graph one dot um, set title and just say, let's see, distribution. 
distribution of, let's see, um, of total carbohydrates. Is that how you spell carbohydrates? Carbohydrates. Oops. All right, and then that should be that. And then I can do some more like data analysis with this. Um, I can do, I can find what the mean is for that column. So what's the average? But that wouldn't make sense, would it? Oh no, yeah, it would make sense with the, the carbohydrates. So it would be like the average number of carbohydrates. And I can do dot mean. And that would give me an answer. So that would be like 31 would be the total number of carbs. Um, and then I could also set that by standard deviation. So how far each of the data points with each of the carbohydrates vary from the mean. Um, and I can do that by doing data. Um, and I can do total carbohydrates. And then let's see, I can do dot STD. And that would give me that answer right there. Now, here's the thing. Um, when it comes to standard deviation, there's something that I have to always look into, and that's whether the data is like a sample or a, like from the population. So if it's from um, a sample, I'm going to use PANDA's um, STD function, which is standard deviation function, and that the difference between that and the STD function from NumPy is that PANDA's is good for sample data sets. Um, where the data set is basically, you know, just sample data, right, from a population, while NumPy is good for population data set, so it's, like, straight from your population. Um, so in this case, it it's, like, literally up to you, technically, to kind of differentiate between a sample and a population, but I'm just honestly going to treat it as a population data set if I really just want to look into, you know, um, the, or if I really just want to look into insights for this particular um you know, McDonald's in India. I mean, well, actually, McDonald's Indian menu items. Hold on. Let me see. So it's the cafe menu, menu items, per service size. The data set contains all variety of items present in the menu. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to treat it as a population data set. Um, instead of a sample. So if I'm going to treat it as a, sample, a population data set, then I'm going to have to use NumPy, um, the NumPy SCD, or I can do an equivalent and just change the DDOF to zero, which is degree of freedom, and that's going to give me the actual standard deviation for this data set, um, for th particularly for the carbohydrates column. Um, for, I just lost track of my sentence. Um, this standard deviation, okay, let me rephrase. This is stands for the degree of freedom, and the degree of freedom is basically used in the formula for standard deviation to kind of, um, as like kind of like a margin of error. So it kind of, it's, it's in the name, it's a degree of freedom. So it's kind of giving freedom and movement for any error, just in case there was like any, you know, miscalculations. And so usually if it's a sample size, there could be, you know, like an error, right? Because it's not like the true population in that data. And so that's why they, the DDOF is one, because you want to give some freedom to it. But if it's straight from the population, then the degree of freedom can be zero, right? Because there's not really anything to, you know, to kind of um, come like make up for. So that's that. So that's what you have to know for standard deviation. Now let's see how to determine if it's a normal distribution. Well, this really is not, um, I don't think, I mean, technically it's like skewed right. So it's not really a normal distribution, but let's see. I could do, Let's do some research. So how to convert um, skewed data to a normal distribution. How to transform data to better fit their normal distribution. Um, right.
so what exactly is happening here? Oh, there's just one. Okay, let's do something else. Transform data to normal distribution. How to transform features. How to transform data to normal distribution. Okay, when you sample data from a process, but it's not a sample though. Sometimes we want to use that data to make predictions about the processes and the population. Yes. If the data comes from a controlled process that follows some physical nature, then that data from that process may follow a specific distribution. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, let's see. So check for outliers. The first thing you need to do is check if the data is not normal because of any outliers. A normal data does not have any outliers. Hence, if there are outliers in the data, then there may be the reason blah, 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 blah. Data, if so, we can correct the data and then check if the data is normally distributed. If there are no data entry errors, the next question is asked if the outliers are because of some special causes which are not going to reoccur in the future. If so, we need to go blah, blah, blah and delete these outliers. However, if these outliers have a chance of recurring in the future, then it would not be appropriate to just blindly delete them from analysis. We need to look for other ways of handling this data. Okay, so I guess I could do that if I remember. So, outliers, there's a specific formula. So, for outliers, I believe it has to be Q3, something with the IQR, and then like it has to be Q3 times IQR. Let me look that up. So let me see. If only I had my statistics notebook. Um, so it would be Q3. How, okay, what's the lower limit for outliers AP stat? Oh, well, oh, 1.5. That's what I was missing. 1.5 times Q3. 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 What is the stuff? All right, so, oh, here it is. Oh, it's not times, it's minus. I'm so dumb. Okay. 1 Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. All right, and then let's see. Okay, whoops. All right, so um, let's see, where was I? So the IQR, right? The IQR comes from kind of like the middle of the data set, so I might as well just visualize it. So I can just do dot box plot and then just Put in the column name, total, carbohydrate, and G's, run that, see, could not interpret input because I probably spelled something wrong like I always do. Alright, let me just do this real quick. So that's the box plot. Um, so the IQR is basically the blue box, right? The Q3 minus the Q1, um, where the view, the where, so I can't even speak. The blue box, when it starts, it's the Q1, and then when it ends, it's the Q3. Um, and so the IQR is basically the Q3 minus the Q1. So I have to actually get those values, and I can do that by using um, the quantile function, which, let me see if I remember where it's actually coming from. I believe if I use NumPy, I can import numpy as np, run that, then I can do np dot quantile, and then in here I can get the actual data, so I can do data and then put in the column name and then put the quantile that I want, so if it's the first one that's the 25, so it starts at 0 and then 25 and then 50 is the median and then 75 is the like where the blue box ends and then at the end is like 100 obviously. So now if I run that, let's see what it says, blah, 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 0.25, sorry, 0.25. Alright, it's 15.74. Alright, so that's, um, I'm going to set that equal to Q1 and then I'm going to just copy it, paste it, and just change this to Q3 and change that to 0.75 because that is what Q3 is, 75% of the data, and now we're good. And then the IQR um, should be equal to Q3 minus 
Q1. Let me research that and then let me research that. I mean, let me run that. That's the answer. So that's our IQR. So now, why do we need our IQR again? Because I wanted to, um, oh, transform my data, duh. So, oh, I wanted to do the outlier stuff. Okay. But here's the thing. I kind of want to research, um, let's see, is there a way how to find IQR with NumPy? I wonder, percentile, blah, 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 if there's like a function. Oh no, Every okay, there's not a function, it's just the way that I did it. I wonder why there's not a function, like there should be a function. Oh, there is now an IQR function in sci-fi.stats, it's available, but it was considered too domain specific. You may be better off just using Jamie's answer since sci-fi code is just an overcomplicated version of the same. Um find exact values, you should consider doing something like, okay, uh, it's okay, fine, it's a fine. All right, so that's the IQR, and so to find the first outlier or to find the lower limit, so anything before the lower limit basically is going to be an outlier, so that would be 1.5 um, times the IQR, and then the upper limit, um, let's see, Anything above this or further than this means that it's going to be an outlier. So let me run that, run that, and then do lower limit, and do upper limit. Run that, run that. Okay, so that's the lower limit and that's the upper limit. So now I need to like filter through the data and see if there are any values that are greater than 91.39 and less than negative 29.65. So um, let me do that. Let's see if I remember how to do that. So data dot, not dot, um, total calories. Let's see if I just run that greater than upper limit. Let's see if that works. Okay. Um, I've never tried this before. If I do true, is that even syntax appropriate? No. No, okay. Um, I want to see all of them though. Or maybe, let's see, I could do pd dot options huh if it was display and it was something like that display all uh, display let me see how to display all rows and panels I always forget this blah 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 no 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 that's not what we want no Set, oh, it was set option, display dot max rows, none, okay. Set options. And then display dot max, not all, rows. And then none. Max row, display dot max row, none, has to be caps lock. Okay, let me make sure that this is before this and then run that. Okay, now I can see all of them. And I don't believe that there's anything. Everything is literally false. So there are no, oh, there's one outlier. Okay. But then the question is, how would I determine if that outlier is like, you know, if it's something that's going to reoccur or whatever. So it's literally the fifth, um, the fifth index. And then so that's the values for that. And then I could also do the same for, um, let's see. If it's anything less than the lower limit, let me run that. So I see that, let's see, everything is so false, 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 and I don't think I see a true. Let me see. There's one true at the top, and that's literally it. So there's no outliers and the to the left, but there is an outlier to the right. 
you can obviously see it here like it's right there um so i think i can maybe disregard that that is what make that is basically what is making more of the data skewed um so let's see where is is so interesting products at the bottom hmm. okay um so i could remove that outlier see anything all right I can just I'm just gonna do this so I'm gonna do data and then total carbohydrates and then we'll do dot drop and then the axis is zero because it's gonna be a row and then I want to drop let's say in place true so that it's permanent and then is there any way to drop um, like row five, I forgot to actually access that. Oh, okay then. And then data dot, let me just rerun the former statement that I had so now I can check upper limit, run that. And now it's still there though, which is a problem. So in place true as I, let me see. So how to drop row in pandas? Nope. Let's see. Okay. Is that literally not what I did? All right. Maybe should have added the names. Index values are deleting rows. Column names are deleting columns. Um. Let's see. So if I'm deleting rows. Where would that be? All right, that would be all the way over here. So I need that for with index values. So that would be labels and then zero labels, blah, blah, blah. So then wouldn't that just literally be, that's exactly what I had, label. equals five it's still true though let me see if i could just run the box plot again and scroll all the way down right here yeah it's still there i wonder why it's not deleting so let me see Oh, I can delete row based on, oh, that's why. Okay, so data dot index, um, and then I'm supposed to do index five. So data dot index five. So let me try that instead of labels. Data dot index five. Let me scroll up. No, it's still there. Are you serious right now? Interesting. Oh, it's because I'm not setting the data equal to that. Data object is non scriptable. It's because it's not. Let me see. Data, blah, blah, blah. Let me run the data. What do you mean? I literally just did that. Drop, drop. Huh. Non type is non scriptable. Data dot index is supposed to be huh. 
So we now have a set of true, a plus equals true, axis is zero, and then this has to be five. Why is it like that? Interesting. Data dot index five non type object is not scriptable. So what's the answer? Dot sort. Please don't call your list list that clobbers the bits in this type. I'm not sure. Hello, blah. Okay, exception is actually none. You can reproduce the array if you get anything if you try this Python command. What? Let me just run from the beginning. All right, see, I don't get an error now. That doesn't make sense because. Okay. Uh, oh, it was giving me. Oh, I know why it was giving me an error because once it runs and I run it again, it was saying, wait, there's nothing there because they already deleted it. So that makes sense. But still, it doesn't make sense that I'm not able to see the data. So let me go ahead. I mean, I'm able to see the data. That's the problem. Like, I'm able to see. Oh, what just went on? I'm able to see the um, the five still there, and I don't want it there. So it's literally still here. This has never happened. Are you serious? Data. And then let's see. Okay, let me rerun this. What happened now? Non type object is non scriptable. What does this even mean? It must be a better way. How to drop lone pandas? Okay, let me see. So, labels none, axis zero, index none, columns, blah, blah, blah. Single label and list like it's used with axis param, axis, okay. Specify rows except single label and list like. So I want to be able to technology index would be indices. I don't want that. Dot drop. Hmm. Oh my god. I index label. So let me see. The row number would be dot index. Okay. Um df dot index and then one and three. I just don't understand why it's not working. Well, I'm literally doing the same thing. So this would end up being data dot drop. And then for this one, it would literally just be one. What does this mean? Non type object. Okay, and so can I do DF1 now? Let me see if it works now. Oh, it does. Okay, so why didn't it work for five? That's what I did earlier. Okay, now it works. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. And now I can just do in place. I wonder why it doesn't work with the indices. Equals true, and it should stay that way. Okay, so let me just do that one more time and make sure that that's what that is. So now, wait, 
I don't want it to have, I don't want it to be a new data frame because what I'm plotting is the data and now I can see that there's no outlier. So now I've removed the outlier, perfect. All right, so that's beautiful, that's beautiful. Um, so now let me see, if I just do SNS dot, this plot, and then I do data, uh, total carbohydrates, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now it's looking definitely more normally distributed. That's beautiful, honestly. I think this is actually beautiful. But here's the thing, though. Like, how would I determine if that outlier was, like, an actual outlier? Like, is it a significant... I mean, obviously, it's... Yeah, it is a significant outlier because it is, you know, it is 1.5 times the IQR above the Q3, right? And so that means it's a significant outlier, but, like... In context of business, like, don't I have to do more research as to, like, determine if I really need to delete this or if it's going to be a reoccurring outlier, just like the article said, like, you know? So that's one interesting point to kind of work with. And so now that I got rid of the outlier, now the data is literally normally distributed and it's not skewed right anymore. And now I can make a beautiful graph of this data. So let's say I want to know the proportion um, Actually, before I do that math, let me just make it pretty. I love making things pretty. So I'm going to go back up to, let's see. Let me kind of get rid of all this noise. I'm going to go back up here. This is kind of the graph. I want to make this graph like the second one. What I'll do is I'll just kind of copy this and just scroll all the way down and then paste this in here. And then what I'll do, I'll have to like, redo this so I'll have to do import pandas as pd and kind of just redo everything and just do data equals pd dot read csv because right now it's plotting the graph I just made um it's the first one it's not what I want just paste that in there all right beautiful okay and then now for the second graph I'll just do sns dot this plot, literally what I just did, I can just copy and paste it on it so it's right here. Just copy that. And then make sure that I have, let's see, this above right here. So this is kind of me putting everything together. Um, and then I can just make sure that I set the axis that it's going to go into to be graph 2. So obviously it's going to be in the second graph. And now I'll be able to see it. Now, beautiful, right? So this is going to be the distribution of total carbohydrates. Well, both of them are. But this one is going to be um, be transformed. So I'll just do graph2.set title. And I'll do the transformed or maybe the transformed normal distribution. Does that make sense? What do you call transformation? Transform data. Um, that's not how you spell normal. Transform normal distribution of total carbohydrates. All right, and that would be that. And then maybe I could do a break in here, like a little N, to put kind of a space in there. All right, um, and then I could do that. Here as well, maybe. All right, and then I could also make it pretty. I can choose a color. Let me go to colors and choose a nice color, palette generator. Let's see, I could do maybe this color. I'll just do that. Uh, let me go back. Now let's see if I remember how to do this. So if I go to SNS, I don't know if it's color or colors. We'll see. Let's see if that works, if that's a syntax. Yes, it is. Okay, great. And I'll just go ahead and do the same for this graph as well. Paste that in there so it looks nice and pretty. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is the transform normal distribution of total, total carbohydrates, and this is just the original distribution of total carbohydrates in this orange over here. And then what I want to do now that I have the data transformed um, it's fairly normal, right? I want to get the normal 
distribution like curve like I want to see the curve and it's obviously going to be the same um, but I still just want to see it so for that I'm going to have to from scipy.stats import let's see um, the function norm as a normal distribution and then I'm going to plot the value so I'll do plt dot plot and then plot the x values x what am I doing x values and the y values and then I'll kind of set them up over here so now that I know that it's a normal distribution I'm gonna have to regain the mean and the standard deviation again so I'll have to do data dot not data dot I have to do total total carbohydrates and get the mean and then set that equal to the mean and then I'll just copy this right and just set the standard deviation std right that's how i abbreviate it although it might remind you of something else that's not really relevant but i'll do std and then make sure ddof is set to um because i may be a population data set it's not a sample i'll set it to zero all right and then run that and then over here i'll just um set up my x values and my y values so my x values I'm going to use actually let's see this is interesting because at this point I have two options I can use the function mode space to generate like random x values or I can use the x values from the actual data which will be interesting so let me try to do that so I'll do data dot not data dot I keep doing data dot um that but then how would I Actually, that would be weird. And then what I can do here is get norm.pdf, which is the probability density function. So we'll find the probability density of each of my x values. And given that the lope is the mean and the standard, the scale would be the standard deviation. And then let me go ahead and see what that graph looks like. Wow, that's horrible. Okay, so um let's see if i can fix that so interesting so maybe instead of that i'll do it the normal way so i'll just delete that and then import numpy as that's not useful numpy as np and then i'll do np dot lin space which generates an array of values with the starting point being let's see I would want to do three times so it would be like the mean minus three times the standard deviation and then I want it to end the mean plus three times the standard deviation with a thousand values in between but let's see I don't that's creating fake data though that's not the real data wouldn't the data have to be the values that are already here right like but it is a normal distribution though of given the mean and given that standard deviation so wouldn't i know huh i'm trying to think would it be a, would it be appropriate to use lin space like this is this is not i don't even know this is like creating data because there's not a, how many values even are there here so let me do data dot shape why can't i spell like ever all right there's a hundred four there's not even a thousand values so i'm going to just be inventing like values so that doesn't make sense so i'm wondering if it's appropriate to use this but if i use the other one it's like not giving appropriate like an appropriate graph like would any normal distribution, let's see, I could do this, or I could just go back to using the x values that are given in this table, but I feel like it just doesn't give what it needs to give, right? Like look at this, it's so bad. So I could do plt.plot. There's also this thing, a finesse.kde. 
no, it's SNS. What is it again? I know it's like Hind. Oh, it's Displot maybe? Or is it? It's either Displot or Hisplot. So it's like KDE or something. And then it's like Beta. Let me see if that works. Hmm. Cannot convert string to float. So it's why is it a string? What? Regular? Oh, my bad. Total carbohydrates. Okay, no, that looks absolutely terrifying. Um, it's giving though. It's kind of giving, you know. This is more what I want. I wonder why it doesn't work with like normal data. Like, what's the difference? Because there's too many points in the same place, is that why? While like in learn space, it's only one point, and maybe over here it's like repeating points, maybe, in the same area. Interesting. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. How would I plot normal distribution by? of my data. Hmm. So that X, but that doesn't make sense. I want like real data, like how do you plot it from like a data frame? Yes, like this. So, oh, it's a KDE plot, okay. But here's the thing though, KDE plots are kernel estimations. They're not necessarily the actual normal curve, they're just estimations of it. Um, but wouldn't that make sense though? Because that's kind of, yeah, that makes sense because it's not you're estimating what the normal curve would look like. It's not actually, like in the real world, you wouldn't actually have, maybe you wouldn't have like the normal curve like fit perfect. So I feel like a KDE plot would be sufficient. But then it says the X limit to 30 and 170. Interesting, where do they get those numbers from? So they start just a random dot normal. So they just put in, wow, they put in a thousand values. And then, okay. It's just so interesting. Hold on. This is a density graph. Exactly, this is exactly what I just said. However, this is a density graph, not a normal distribution graph, which is calculated using U.S. derivation. That's what I said. That's, oh, this was a question. No, no wonder. I was, that's what I've been having. Oh my God, stop. Because this is my exact problem. This is my exact problem. Like, how do I actually get the normal distribution graph? With the actual data. Oh, yes. How do we do it? So, DF mean. Okay, I got that. Okay. See, they used mp.std, calculating probability density function. Maybe I should use, like, maybe I should use the DOF equals to 1 or, like, the mp.std because ideally most of the data that we get in the real world is sample data. Like, we never actually get data from a population, so, like, maybe I should just do that. Um, stats from .pdf, that's literally what I did, did I not? Sort values. DF means that okay, got that. So is that what I have to do? Interesting. It's this part. What is okay, so let me see. Wouldn't the values already be sorted like wouldn't that make sense? Um okay, so x values dot sort values. Method unsupported operand type store method and float. Are you serious? Okay, um, and then again, all right, 
still okay so that wouldn't work and same because they're floats aren't they guilty no but these are floats also floats i mean that's annoying so i don't know um Same. Okay, so I have to do here too, or is this? Okay, um, let me do that then. So I have to do dot sort values. Still doesn't work. Isn't that amazing? All right, let me go back to. Let's see. Your answer could be improved with a blah blah blah. Are you serious? Um. Mean standard deviation. I got that. NP dot random normal standard mean standard deviation. One hundred. Normal distribution graph. What? Nah, don't get me involved with bins, bro. Like, I don't do bins. Okay, but this is, like, a really interesting thing because barely even has that. Where are my extensions? How am I supposed to... Hello? Where are my extensions? Am I not in my account? Oh my god, I'm so confused right now. Whatever. Um, Alright, I'm just going to remove it over here. And just go back over here and do some more research. Alright, okay. But I want it from a data frame, though. So, how to plot... From a data frame. Okay, how to plot, blah, blah, blah. Oh, a test. I love tests. Not when I take them, but when I run them. Let's see, select. This is SQL, what? Oh, it is. Uh huh. That's funny. Okay, um. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, distributions for Canada and Seaborn. Okay. Okay. Thirty E plot. I'm still, oh, here it is, but that's not, that's still a density. No, that's not what I want. Still not what I want. Like, why can't we actually have something that plots the normal distribution? Like, I'm so confused. Is it because it's not actually perfect? Maybe this one. Everybody uses sig uh, mean and space, but I need how to do it with an actual data frame. So I wonder why this wouldn't work. Let me look at a documentation for this. So this sorts the values along other axes. Um, so the axes to be sorted, so that would end up being the row from no. I mean, I don't understand why. First of all, I probably wouldn't be even use it. Like the x values should already be sorted in order. Or is it because there's not every single value, which is why that there's a kernel estimate. What if, actually no, 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 I don't know, 
so this wouldn't work. So let's see. It is giving me weird lines. But then at the same time, it's getting rid of If I were to just get this and just run that, I would get that. But then if I get this and then that, I would get this. Which is kind of normal, maybe. I don't know. I don't even think. I mean, could I even use the normal distribution? Here? Okay, so maybe I can. So maybe I can figure out what proportion of, let's see, total carbohydrates, carbohydrates were greater than, I don't know, 60. So then I can do like norm dot um, SF and then 60 and then rope would be mean and then scale would be standard deviation and then that would give me my answer. So the proportion of carbohydrates that were greater than 60 were about like 7.08 percent so like seven percent or like 7.9 percent or something no not 7.8 percent zero seven point yeah 7.08 percent so seven point or seven percent basically i don't know is it like statistically fine to make like these types of maybe you know what I mean maybe I need a bigger data set and maybe just maybe then I'll be able to have like a more normal distributed graph so I'll go ahead and just try to figure that out let me go ahead and actually I don't have time to copy and paste let me just move it over there and just come back here and find a new data set with like a billion rows that would be great um I don't know big like what um let's see let's see let's see let's see college student data no it's too little let's see maybe i could search up for normal distribution Okay, let me try doing this over here. Let me download this one. Open that up. And I'm just putting that in my data folder. Okay, let me go to Google Colab and go to the file. Open that up and then over here, I'll attempt to do the same thing. Maybe it's the data that's the problem. So I'll import pandas as PD. Um, so I'll do that right now. And then I'll do data. I'll do df2 set that equal to PD dot read CSV. And I'll just right click and then copy the path and paste that in there. Just look at the data real quick. Oh, it's df2 actually. Dot head foo. All right, so I'm going to plot the distribution for that. So I'll do his plot first, and then I'll do df2 and get the profit. And then run that. All right, so that's pretty. So now let me see what if I happen to do SNS dot plot kind KDE. Hopefully that works this time. And then just have it be data and then just be profit. So data. Bars. Oh, 
what is going on? Oh, it's day of DF2, that's why. And I forgot to put in... Interesting. I do backslash. Modular keyboard has no attribute plot. Of course it doesn't. KDE where it's disk plot. I could do a KDE plot. And then get rid of time. Alright, okay. So that's interesting. Um, so let me see if that would work here. So if I were to import import okay hello import numpy as mp and then just do my i don't even need to do that i already did it so just do let's see my um x values and have them be equal to data not data df2 and then just profits and then for my y values, it's going to be equal to norm dot pdf, and then it would end up being, okay, what would it end up being? Um, I'm not even thinking. Oh, yeah, my x values. And then the lope would be the mean, and the scale would be the standard deviation. And then, whoops. All right, what am I doing again? And then just do plt dot plot the x values and then the y values. But then I haven't gotten this is a new data frame, so I would have to do um I would have to set up the mean and the standard deviation here. So the mean and the standard deviation would be df2. Profits dot standard deviation, and then over here would be df2 profit Why do I even do this? df2 dot mean. All right, and then that's what that gives me. Oh my God, why? So it's not the data that's the problem. Maybe I'm the problem. Just kidding. Okay, Um. I don't know. So even if it's like literally a normal distributed data, the KDE plot still isn't perfect. And this method still gives me like random weird lines. So I wonder, how in the world do I do this? Like, how do I plot a normal distribution from a Pandas data frame? So, KDE plot. I mean, the closest I'm to it is the KDE plot by Seaborn, but that's a that's a density. So I don't think that's that's not um what it should be. So that's something to look into. Um, but I think that's it for today. That's what I attempted to do. So as a recap, I did manage to learn how to, or to like relearn, I guess, how to, you know, transform data to be normal. Not really. I mean, I've done it before for like um, linear regression and stuff, but that's like, like a different type of mindset. That's like you're doing it to be able to actually, that makes sense. Yeah, you're doing it to be able to predict accurate values. That's why you're transforming the data to be linear. Um, but for this, I've never actually just took random data when it outside of the context of like linear regression and try to make it normal. Like, why would I try to make it normal? May it's maybe something I should research, right? So like, what's the need of making data normal? What's the use of it? You know, and it really has to do with using the normal um, distribution curve to um, to provide estimates, right, of of, of, the, of the data. So yeah, so I basically had the original data, which is the graph on the left, and then I transformed it um, by removing the outlier, right, which is like the only outlier um, from the data. And then it ended up being 
what you see on the right. So that's one thing. And then, um, yeah. And then the other stuff that I tried to research was how to plot a normal distribution from a data frame. I've done it using, you know, LinSpace and creating my own X values, but it doesn't make sense to use my own X values. Unless it does. I don't know. So maybe, um, it's not maybe, I do have to look into that. I tried it with two data frames, one that wasn't really so normal, and one that was literally normal, and it still gave me that, which was really weird. Um, so that's something I have to research into, um, and that's it for today. That's enough exploring for today. Um, so I'm gonna go now. Bye.